What's up, Wargamers? Welcome back to World of Wargaming. My name's Isaiah. Today, we're going to be heading back out into the apocalypse with a game of County Road Z. Now, technically speaking, today's a double feature because I'm going to be playing two missions in this battle because they were both very, very quick, short, kind of in and out, grab it, and let's get gone kind of missions. So before we grab the goods, if you haven't hit that like button, that subscribe button and that bell notification, please consider doing that as it does help to hold back the zombie apocalypse. And let's get into this game of County Road Z from Earthbound Games. What's up, folks? We are here with campaign turn nine of my County Road Z campaign. So Tabitha has one more turn of healing. I did one turn of just stuff around the base, sent Declan out to scavenge, Ash got healed up, Ray kept everything running. While Tabitha's healing, I'm going out right now to scavenge for some fuel. I found while we were at Ray's, we noticed that on the back side of Ray's property, there was this little setup right here with a gas station and a what we think is probably, most likely it's a Dollar General. So we're coming to check this out. Now, because of the way everything spawned and my very limited carrying capacity, I think I'm gonna do this mission twice, back to back, both times on camera. Um, Cause I think this first one is gonna be a very kind of in and out type of affair, or at least that's what I hope. So I may come back to this same spot in the same video to maybe search for some food or some hardware because there are some upgrades that I would like to get done. Like I would like to get a gas range put in and I would really like to get a gas range put in because if once, again, once I get a gas range put in, then my food production for the moment is at a, I don't have to worry about food. I don't have to think about food. Like I've, I'll, I will be producing enough food on base to feed everybody. Then I can start going out looking for some other things like a vehicle and some cars and just other things that would make life better and easier. So for this first run at this, we've got Ash, Declan, and Ray all deployed. They've walked up on the south side of the property where they've just kind of followed the fence line from Ray's salvage over to this place. We've got a lot. I rolled a, rolled a, like a nine for some resource markers. I do need to roll and see if there's gonna be a survivor anywhere. Don't think so, I think that's the opposite of what I need. Yes, that is the opposite of what I need. That's a one, so no survivors to worry about at the moment. So we're gonna get into my first actions. So I need to, I need to deal with these two zombies. Because pretty much everything else, there are 12 zombies that started on the board and they are pretty much all got rolled up on that top edge. So I think I can just sneak in, grab some goods, and bounce. So we're going to start with Ash. I'm going to measure out and I'm going to get where I can hit this one, but not alert this one. I'm going to move just down the field line and take a shot at that zombie. Oh, that is a miss. Will, that zombie's now, actually that zombie's going to push back three inches. too aggressive. Um, I'm out of actions here, so it doesn't matter what I want to do. Declan and Ray are both going to move towards the objective. I'm making a double move to get to right there. We're not going to put Ray... I'm just going to put Ray right here, just so he's tucked back just, just a little bit more. We'll go to zombie phase, where this zombie, who is aggressive, will... Am I close Active enough? zombie is not within movement, plus eight of a survivor. So it will move to the closest passive zombie, which is this one, and make it aggressive. Back to me ash is going to move up and scavenge he will make three resource tokens from that scavenge we'll pick up two of them and ray will move around and pick up one of them zombies still do not have an enemy within eight so they will move towards close closest passive zombies 
but you're gonna be that which way. works out beautifully for me let's see ash wants to go this way three up and over yeah so he's gonna double move Three, 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 three. Okay, cool. So he's gonna get to right there with a double move. Ray is gonna go ahead and bounce. He can't do any more good here. Also, I forgot to play some random zombies. Let's do that. Yeah, folks, totally forgot about that. So we got one here. We got one here. Um, Knowing that now, I wouldn't have been close enough to trigger him with anything that I've done at this point, so we're good there. Declan's going to take a shot at it. Oh, I don't know why am I rolling two dice. Just one. Three plus his handgun of... Four is a seven, which will hit. That's a dead zombie. Don't have to worry about him. And then Declan is with his remaining movement is just going to come to right here. We'll do zombie stuff. Fresh one walked up right there. Ash is going to activate. Scavenge. Pick up a resource token. Declan is going to stay put. Yes, Declan is going to stay put. These zombies are gonna move back here and they will be there able to activate a lot of other zombies, creating a big old nasty horde behind the gas station. I am gonna run back to base. My bags are full. I can't hold anything else. I'm gonna run back to base and drop off what I've managed to scavenge. All right, so XP for this one. Ash and Declan are getting one. Ray will get two because of the bonus XP. Uh, Ray is going to be on the mission team again next time, not building anything this turn. Tabitha has one more turn to, of resting. Ray is going to be on the mission team, so I'm going to spend two of my three fuel to keep water to the garden and power to the refrigerator with the generator and the pump. And these three are then going to be, Lord, going to then be coming back here to see what else they can scavenge. I think I'm gonna be looking for... Hardware. I'm gonna look for hardware this time. We're back out, we've chosen to come in from a different path as, as we did some reconnoitering around the scene. We noticed that the horde had shifted and moved around since we were last here. So we've got Declan, Ash, Ray deployed on this side. I remembered to use my scout move this game. So I moved these two zombies three inches that way and moved these two object or resource tokens this way. Now, you can't move a resource token or a zombie into or out of a resource rich zone, which in this is the Dollar General, the road, and the gas station are the resource rich areas. But I could move them closer to me and stay in the resource rich area. So we are gonna get into the second round of scavenging. This is gonna be, this looks a lot iffier to me. Uh, there's a lot more potential for things to go sideways here because I'm having to kind of run this gauntlet. We're gonna see how it goes. So we're gonna start with Ash, who's gonna shoot here. I've got range to hit him and not alert him. So that is a dead zombie, okay. Starting off well. And then we're gonna move closer to this. Is that right? No. Hmm. Yes. Stands right now with no project team, no staffed facilities, and two turns since the last siege. There's no way for a siege to happen, so no need to roll it. Um, I was short by one food, but that's still not enough to cause any disadvantages in the upcoming scavenging mission. So, that being said, I'm going to reset the zombies and the resources, and we're going to get out here to see if we can scrape up some hardware. I'm going to move up six, take a shot at that zombie in the field. That will hit and kill a zombie. Dead. And then Ray is just going to scuttle up to be with the group. Uh, 
that'll bring us to zombie stuff. So zombie that is farthest away from me, which is going to be this zombie. We'll switch to aggressive. And then we'll get a new zombie at 24 and 9. Back to me, where Ash is going to move and scavenge, creating three resource tokens, because he's special. And then my other friends are going to move up to the pile of This things. zombie will move. To here and once here it will activate both of these zombies and then oh and that zombie and create a horde random at 12 and 28 I really want to deal with this zombie in particular so ash is gonna step back because right now I don't have a clear line of sight the tree is blocking I can't see the zombies head so I can't kill it so we're gonna step back just enough to give myself a bead on that zombie, and we're gonna take the shot. That is a one, that is a miss, but it's a shotgun, so it'll push it off the board. Either way, I don't have to deal with it anymore. And I'm not close enough to activate any of those fellows, so let me see here. Um, Declan will then pick up two, and sit still, Ray will pick up the last one, and back up. Not gonna back him up too far though. I want to try to keep him in between Ash and Declan. Um, just trying to protect him as much as I can. Bring us to zombies. The horde is gonna move D10 in a random. So we're gonna go one inch this way. Horde has done their thing. We're gonna go place a zombie. I'm not gonna forget that. Got a 18 and 28. Zombie pops out of the woods. Um, bringing it back to me. Declan. Gonna take a shot at that zombie. I got a 12 inch range and an eight inch noise radius. So yeah, we'll take that shot. Declan gonna take a shot. Getting a two plus three, four is six which would be enough to hit an aggressive zombie, and that is just a passive zombie. So it wounds on a, it dies on a four up. Uh, Ray, oh no, and then Declan's gonna move back. Ray will also move back. Small adjustment. Declan's gonna move, peel back just a little bit after his shot. Ray is gonna move up and scavenge this other resource token that was over here. And then we'll go see what the horde does. Horde's gonna move six inches that way. Because that movement, this one had to use a lot of movement to climb over to the fence. Uh, he's gonna end up, ended up getting separated. So he's just now an aggressive zombie on his own. Let's place a zombie. Darn these trees. We got a six and a 28. And th that side of the board has been rolling hot today. Okay, so right up there near me, I need to deal with that. So, I'm gonna to try to deal with it with Declan. So Declan's gonna take a shot. Two plus four is six. That will end that zombie. Then Declan's gonna move back this Ash way. is gonna move up and pick up. And then Ray is gonna fall back to an in-between position. Horde movement. Gonna go one inch this way. And this zombie will move towards the closest passives, which are these, which is gonna make another hole. Starting to get sweaty and disrespectful in here. So I feel that it's my time to get up out of Dodge. Uh, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna book it out of here. I've got all that I can carry. I'm just gonna, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta see where this last zombie drops. Um, that's going to be up here somewhere. That's not going to affect me. So we're going to jump out of here. Awesome. So, you know, a couple of quick, simple games um, like this can get you there. You know, it doesn't always have to be a long game. You don't always have to stick around and kill all the zombies. Again, this is not 
in my opinion, like you, I'm I'm in survival mode. Like if I can not engage, then that is the option that I will take. I will choose to not engage with something. But that's my play style. Uh, but that's going to carry us to the end of turn ten. Campaign has now been going for ten turns. I've only lost one person. I'm pretty pleased with myself so far. I'm really excited to see how how far. I can go with the community. That's that's one of the things that excites me about the game is just seeing how far I can get before I reach potential catastrophic failure. Uh, and we're still in the infancy of this community. We're we're still working on like stabilizing the food source. But I'm almost there with that. I just I got to build a grill, build a build not a grill, but a build a build, hook up the gas range, and I'm going to be in a pretty good spot. So let's go to post game, finish out this game, and then get ready for the next mission. Next mission. I don't know. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. First up, XP. Declan and Ash are each going to get one XP each again. My bonus XP is going to go to Ray because that will give me what I need to get him up to the next tier where he's going to be a little bit better, a little bit more helpful, but he's not going to be any more of a drain on the resources. I feel like tier two is the, that's the sweet spot for just the random guys is one like Ray. This is the first time Ray's, you know, these this this scavenging mission with Tabitha Hurt. It's the first time Ray's ever had to come out and show up, and I'm glad he did. But we gotta uh, we gotta make some improvements. So post game, that's my XP. Ray is gonna go up to tier two here because I have four XP, and to get your new to level up a tier is two times the new tier level. So I'm going to tier two. So I need to spend four XP. Okay, so right here. I'm a little bit hung up on this. So Jordan, if you see this, help me out with some clarification, brother. Uh, when a tier level is increased, survivor stats are increased by one and a new skill is learned. If a survivor has more than one stat at zero, when they gain a tier, choose one stat to go up by one. So I assume that that means you do both of these. So I would everything will go up by one. And then if I had more than one stat at zero, when I gain the tier, I would choose a second one to go up by a single one. That's my understanding, but if I'm wrong, help I think me. I just answered my own question, but I'm not sure because a tier two citizen should have one stat at two and one at one and two at zero. So my understanding is to go from when you go from one to two, you would move the one that you already have would go to two, and then one would be at one and two would be at zero. So I think that's the After way. After much back and forth and and he and Holland and doodle daddling, I've settled on. He's going to increase his cooperation. He's going to increase his dex. And he's going to learn archery. We've still got Tabitha's bow. We brought that back with us. So we got that at the house. So he's teaching himself how to use that bow so that he can be a little bit more helpful when he does actually end up in the field. Which will take us to healing wounds. Or no, getting our, getting our resources. So we're going to get one food, two hardware, one fuel. Tabitha. We'll come out of the medical base. She's done healing. She can go back out with us now. Um, Ray is going to go back to the generator room and keep working at that. So he's going to be putting a power to the kitchen for the refrigerator and water to the garden. I do not need to spend any of my fuel right now. Um, I've got six food. So again, going to be a little bit tight rations, but nobody's really going hungry. Still got plenty of places to rest. Project team, however, I do want to get a gas range put in because once I do that, I'm more or less set on food and I can start expanding in other ways. Okay, so Tabitha, who is now well, and Declan are gonna be put on a labor team together. They're gonna be fixing the gas range in the kitchen and building an extra bed into one of the bunk rooms. That way, if we do come across somebody, they got a place to sleep. Uh, which means that on the next turn, Ash is gonna be going out to scavenge because he can bring back more food than, than anybody else. Um, moving forward. There will not be a mission team. Nobody needs to rest or heal. There is no rot to check for. Uh, you require more for the basis of failure. Hunger score. Nobody's gonna have a problem with being hungry. Everybody's got a place to sleep. 
hunger plus exhaustion. So I will have one on my unrest. Storage is good. And we'll check the hole. So, let's see. Okay, so that's an 11. We're good. We're not having a siege yet because I had a lot of stuff going on this turn. So it, it could have... All right, I think I may have gotten cut off there. But I'm back now. That's going to do it for today. Like I said, I am going to do one more campaign turn off the table. Just doing some building around the working on the base and then next turn after that which will be turn 12 we will be going back out for a mission and at that point my food situation should be stable for at least a few turns so i'm going to be going out on either one of the story missions or a thin the herd something other than these other kind of stabilizing missions that i've been working through to get myself to a point where i'm comfortable going out and maybe taking a little bit more risk but that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of County Road Z as we continue to survive the rural zombie apocalypse. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And as always, I'd like to say a big, huge, from the bottom of my heart, thank you to our patrons who support us and pledge to us over on Patreon. You guys are the absolute best. If you enjoyed the content you saw here today and that's something that you would like to consider doing to help out the channel go over there check out the link in the description check out the patreon there's a lot of cool stuff over there including access to our discord server talk to me hang out with me talk about our work what we got going on in the hobby um some shout outs all kinds of cool stuff check it out if that's something that you think you would be into and regardless of whether or not you do that i want you to know that i am incredibly grateful that you decided to stop by and spend part of your day with me today, rolling dice and pushing toy soldiers around. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And as always, may the dice be ever in your favor.